immediately. Uh, one bowl mania. It is New Year's Eve night in San Antonio, Texas, and things are swarming around the Riverwalk in this great event town. It's the Valero Alamo Bowl as a part of Capital One, the Bowl Mania, and lots of folks, about 60,000 of them, are choosing to spend their New Year's Eve evening inside the Alamo Dome, and a great matchup here in the 2019 Alamo Bowl. Utah out of the Pac-12 against the Longhorns of Texas, just about an hour away from their campus. As we get ready to start this Alamo Bowl, it will be a de facto home game for the Longhorns. A big Texas crowd is gathered, and here they come onto the turf inside the Alamo Dome. Disappointing year or not, and for a lot of these Texas fans, it was for Tom Herman and his team. They are here in big numbers, getting ready to cheer on their Texas team. It will be a challenging matchup for the Longhorns because the Utah Utes have had a tremendous year. A tremendous year all the way until the last time they played. And that's a big question looming over this game for Kyle Whittingham and his team in the top five going into the final championship week of the regular season. A playoff spot was so, so close. One went away, and everybody assumed the Utes were going to get that fourth spot in the college football playoff. And of course, they did not get it. We will see tonight how Utah responds. One last chance for a highly decorated group of Utah seniors that have won so many games in Salt Lake City over the last few years as the Utes get ready to take the field here in San Antonio. A focused, determined group. They do not want that Pac-12 championship game to be the last memory of their 2019 season. And here comes Utah out of the Pac-12. was painful to relive I think for Kyle for Utah fans everywhere but this is what happened the last time they were out there together the Oregon Ducks played Utah style football power they pounded the Utes and really in the end they dominated behind CJ Verdell on the ground game a big play defense that came up with a couple turnovers and it was all Ducks they earned the berth in the Rose Bowl tomorrow meanwhile Utah here in San Antonio Happy New Year's everybody Dave Fleming Lewis Riddick Paul Carcaterra with us as well at least a couple hours before the clock strikes midnight we're gonna keep you entertained up until then because we have a bowl this Alamo Bowl has a history of crazy finishes close games we expect another one of those here tonight we have a really interesting matchup Lewis and we sort of set the storylines there Texas they they need a positive finish. It's been a chaotic year for the Longhorns. Utah, the big question is, how will they bounce back from that Pac-12 championship game? Yeah, and when you talk about them bouncing back, Dave, it's all about Utah being Utah. They got a little bit away from that in the Pac-12 championship and kind of got caught off guard by an Oregon team that said, hey, you know what? We're going to take it to you. We're going to play your style of game. And they didn't really know how to respond. They hit him with some big plays in the run, hit him with big plays in the passing game. And even tonight, although Texas may not be able to run the football against that big front four of Utah the same way Oregon did, Texas has some guys on the outside that can absolutely fly. And Utah is a team. We mentioned the senior class, how decorated it is. Seven different players won All-American honors this year for Utah. They've got stars on both sides of the ball, including that guy, one of the best running backs in the country. Yeah, this is a three-time thousand-yard rusher, Zach Moss, who's just an absolute stud. When you talk about inside the tackles running, that's what he is made for. 5'11", 222 pounds. This is a guy who will absolutely test the will of your defense. And then when you're talking about defense, let's talk about Bradley Nye. This is a guy who really epitomizes what Utah is all about. He epitomizes the kind of player that Kyle Whittingham likes to recruit. A guy who is a very high effort player with tremendous skill. That's why he has 12 and a half sacks and is on the verge of breaking the Utah record. Yeah, meanwhile, Utah one win away for the playoff. Texas was not. This was a disappointing year based on expectation level seven and five for the Longhorns. How can they finish on a positive and pull off what would be a pretty big upset? Well, in, the, in a game like this, in order to pull off an upset, you need explosive plays. And Texas has some explosive perimeter players. Starting with Devin Duvernay. Look, this is a guy who was a 10 to 700 meter guy, a Houston sprint champion high school sprint champion he is legit and he will test this banged up secondary and then the return of Colin Johnson think back to USC when they upset Utah they have big high risers on the outside of wide receiver Colin Johnson is 6 6 he's a guy to watch out for tonight as well and it might be a little easier tonight to attack the Utah defense on the perimeter because of their injuries for more on that let's go down to Paul Carcaterra.
Well, Happy New Year, gentlemen. The strength on strength matchup in this game was supposed to be the speed and length of the Texas receivers against the in-your-face defensive backs for Utah. Well, that's not the case. Utah on the back end is depleted big time. Inside, they lost their safeties in the Pac-12 championship. R.J. Hubert and Julian Blackman. Blackman was a thumper and a physical presence. On the outside, Jalen Johnson was an eraser. Utah might even have to use a converted quarterback, Jason Shelley, playing corner tonight. And Tom Herman and his team, they are going to test Utah in the passing game, and they're probably going to do it early. Texas won the toss, and they want the ball. So we'll see if they can set the tone. This 2019 Alamo Bowl is underway from the Dome in San Antonio on New Year's Eve night. A little bouncing kick, returnable for the Longhorns outside the 25. And that's where the Longhorns will start as they begin their first possession of the night with their junior quarterback, Sam Ellinger. Ellinger, who played his high school football in Austin, Westlake High, with such a great tradition of quarterback play, one of the elite high school quarterbacks in the country, came to Texas with a lot of renown to a Jake Fromm among the guys who were in that uh, quarterback class. He is a kid from a very young age, was all about, we've seen that picture before, but he never gets old. He grew up a Longhorns fan and playing close to home here with lots of burn orange here in the stands at the Alamo Dome. So the first play from scrimmage. Texas has the ball and Ellinger is going to drop back to pass with time over the middle. He's got his man caught in the Utah territory and it didn't take long did it. There's Colin Johnson. Yeah I need to put some money down the lottery. Look Colin Johnson right off the bat right down the middle of the field. This is what we're talking about. This guy is a high riser. He's 6'6", 220 plus. He's a guy who will keep an eye on all night long. He's been hurt for a lot of the year but he is a big time difference maker when he's out there. So the quick tempo they run the ball on first down in Utah territory the 34 yard play first play from scrimmage in this game. Yeah defending the middle of the field is going to be very important especially if Utah is going to play zone coverage with two safeties in the back end. They have to close it off. They have to get some help from the linebackers carrying some of these seam routes. Otherwise you can bet your bottom dollar that Texas is going to attack the middle of the field over and over just like they did on the first snap. I mean isn't it funny when we asked Tom Herman you're going to you're going to test him right. Yeah. He, he needs not to hesitate. Absolutely and literally on the first play of this game. So second and seven inside the Utah 40 yard line. Got a bunched formation for the long ones and they'll break out of it. Bellinger will hand the ball off once again. A nice hole left side running for Keontae Ingram. It'll be third and short. Yeah, this is something that Tom Herman said that they have to keep Utah honest with the run game. They can't put it up all the time. Otherwise, their pass rushers will just tee off. He was a little bit concerned about the size of the defensive front for Utah, but said they have some good linemen. They'll get the job done. And they're going to give Ellinger the carry. And Sam Ellinger is more than capable in the run game. Moves the chains with a Texas first down. Sam Ellinger is a big young man. You're talking about 6'3", 230 pounds. Design quarterback runs, quarterback power quarterback counter quarterback draw you're going to see a lot of it tonight this is something they prepared they said that we should be prepared to see Sam's going to have to play a big role tonight yeah not just scrambles and That's broken right. plays but designed quarterback runs three receivers and one tailback first and ten for Texas and the dome gets quiet as the Longhorns run an option style play and Utah's nowhere to be found on the perimeter Almost another first down Ingram with a gain of nine Yeah, with how multiple this offense is meaning as far as the run in the pass game You have to be very secure and sure about your run fits particularly on the perimeter You see right there. They're just optioning the end right there Mika Tafua, and they're out on the perimeter quickly If you don't have your run force predetermined, that's how you can give up big plays So on second and short the handoff will get Texas another first down inside the Utah 15 yard line. So Ingram getting some nice gains in the ground game on this first Texas drive. Yeah, and what you see them doing is mixing up the run in the pass. You see them trying to go quick. They're trying to up the tempo, see if they can wear out the big guys, get their legs kind of a little bit weary here in the first half, and then really take advantage of it in the second half. First and 10, Longhorns on the move to start this game. Sam Ellinger, if he has a big night, he's got a chance to set some single season Texas quarterbacking records. They obviously have had a great history of that position over the years. He's got time again. A little pump fake now. He's going to take off and he'll get tracked down. So Utah gets him behind the line of scrimmage. 
Devin Lloyd will get credit for the tackle. Yeah, Devin Lloyd is one of those big, rangy players that they like to recruit on that side of the ball. When you're looking at Lloyd, you're looking at 6'3", 235 pounds. They love these types of guys who can cover lots of ground, who don't have to necessarily rely on schemes so much as their athletic ability. And they have them all across the board against Utah, uh, with Utah. But Texas has them on the heels here early. Eighth play of the drive coming up, second and 11, officially a sack for the Utes, and Ellinger with one of those designed quarterback runs. It is not easy to run straight up the middle against Utah. Give Ellinger credit. He's a strong kid. He pushed forward and got a nice positive gain there. It's still third down. It's 230 pounds. This is a big man now, and they knew that he was going to have to play a big role. When you have a quarterback who can throw it and run it like that, obviously the numbers are in your favor. The defense is at a disadvantage. I mean, just think Baltimore Ravens, think Lamar Jackson. We're not saying that Sam Ellinger is Lamar Jackson, but the problems he poses for defense is significant. But now, can you use one of those big guys, throw the ball up? Absolutely. Third and six. Texas has a lot of big targets in the receiving game. Duvernay comes in motion. Third and six for the Longhorns. Ellinger in the pocket. Another little pump fake. He's going to throw. He's got a man, but it's knocked away. Intercept, almost intercepted by Josh Nurse, who made a great break on the ball. Incomplete, and Texas is lucky that it was. Well, that's the kind of play that Utah needs. Josh Nurse is a guy who I asked the Utah staff about, 6'3", 200 pounds. Beautiful-looking athlete. you got to finish that and just take it to the house, 99 yards. And Sam Ellinger got away with one right there. He let the ball a little bit too far inside. That's a risky play when you're driven the ball all the way down the field like this. So Cameron Dicker will attempt a field goal to try to put the Longhorns on top. One of the better place kickers in the country. This year. He's got a huge leg. This one from 29 yards. The kick is up. And indoors, you figure the kicking should be solid tonight. Now it is up and good. Oh, a nice start for Texas. An underdog in this Alamo Bowl. But they've got the 3-0 lead. Valero Alamo Bowl is fueled by Valero and in part by Visit San Antonio. Plan your trip at visitsanantonio.com and the Lexus December to Remember sales event now through January 2nd. Now that's a good looking pep rally that's along cool. the river walk. This is a great big event town and every year they treat the Alamo Bowl like a big event. It has produced a lot of classics over the years. Texas got the ball first, went down the field and scored a field goal. So now Utah will have the ball for the first time in their senior quarterback playing his final game with the Utes. Tyler Huntley, who has had a great Utah career. He was a very accomplished high school player in the state of Florida, and yet, in spite of that, was under-recruited, found his way to Salt Lake City, and he's been one of their all-time grades. 74% completion rate, only Joe Burrow better. The company in the Pac-12, he was the first team all-conference quarterback. And look at that good company. If you use ESPN's QBR, Tua, Burrow, Fields, Hurts, Lawrence, and then Huntley. He had a heck of a year. That's not a bad group, is it? So Tyler Huntley in Utah with the ball for the first time. And they're going to throw it on first down. That one completed. Over the middle. That's Cole Fotheringham with some tough running after the catch. He's not the biggest receiving tight end and most prolific that they have, but he's a pretty good one. How about our uh, PlayStation player impact rating, Zach Moss? You talked about him in the open. Joseph Osai, who has been a, a really good, productive linebacker for the Longhorns. Yeah, he's a guy who's all over the field, big, long, rangy, just like all these top schools are trying to recruit. And this is a guy you'll see him making a lot of plays when Texas defense is out here. So 3 nothing Longhorns. Utah will hand the ball off for the first time. Boss tried to bounce it. Longhorns there. Texas is defense ready for at least the first carry of the night. Malcolm Roach kind of led the way. Osai was there as well. Malcolm Roach is, is, a, is a tremendous, tremendous football player. You see him here, number 32, takes on the puller, and you see he's able to turn it back in to his buddies, Osai pursuing inside out. We talked to Malcolm Roach last night. What an impressive young man and an absolute stud. A physical stud. You will watch him at the point of attack tonight. He will battle Utah's big offensive line for the full 60 minutes. I promise you that. This guy was fired up about this game tonight. He says he wants to be a football coach. We said why. He goes, well, my dad was a coach. My granddad was a coach. My uncle's a coach. It's in my blood. Huntley's going to run with it. 
And Tyler Huntley tripped up a little bit short. It'll be third and two coming up for the Utes. The pressure in the perimeter with your speed and athletic ability, that is what multi-dimensional multi -dimensional quarterbacks do. That's why all college coaches want these type of players, guys who are dual threats, because it just gives the defense fits. It makes them pull their hair out, because just when you think you have a guy like this figured out as far as the passing game, he beats you with his legs. Then when you shut him down in the run, he beats you in the pass. It's getting loud already in the first quarter with the Texas fans coming to life on third and two. Huntley designed right that the Longhorns were ready. Stuff for a loss. Keandre Colburn, the redshirt freshman, in the middle of that Texas defense. Yeah, that's a nice job of playing disciplined football, keeping your eyes where they need to be. When you have a dual threat quarterback like this and you have a lot of design quarterback runs, you have to be smart as far as making sure that you stay at home, stay square, get some penetration, and then just make sure you tackle the ball carrier. Texas has missed a lot of tackles on defense. They played a lot of young players, but that's a tremendous, tremendous start there on a crucial third down situation. Uh, the Utes will have to punt the ball away. Deshaun Jamison. Brandon Jones, the primary punt returner and one of the leaders on defense, he is not going to play. He's banged up, so he's going to miss this Alamo Bowl. Jamison did a good job of scooping that one up off the bounce, and it's a decent return, but mostly he prevented the extreme field position. So Texas will get the ball back with a 3 nothing lead on New Year's Eve night in San Antonio. Zach Shackelford is more than a football player. He has a deaf cousin through marriage who inspired him to learn sign language. He's proud of his connection to the deaf community and is a peer role model students can relate to in Austin. Take a look. It's really a neat story. He is a, a cool young man and uh, a guy who is extremely valued on this Texas team. One of the leaders, Zach Shackelford, a senior. Sam Ellinger hit as he throws, and that one into traffic incomplete. It'll be second and 10. I had a chance to speak with Zach. He's a fascinating young man. He can sign, as we saw, was a junior Olympic swimmer and a grill master as well. We might get a taste of that later on the show. Okay, well, there was penalty flag on that play, and I think it's going to go against Utah. 28 defense against an eligible receiver. This is a 10-yard penalty with an automatic first down. We did ask uh, Zach Shackelford about that swimming pedigree, because you look at Zach, and you don't think swimmer, and he said, well, I was a really good swimmer. That was 200 pounds ago, though. Yeah, he's 305-plus he's right now. I don't know if he's going to be, uh, if that's going to be his calling. I think he's a pretty good center. He's got a, he's got a great future. So it's first and ten after the Utah penalty. Texas moved the ball all the way down the field. First time they had it, but had to settle for the field goal. So they lead three nothing here in the first quarter from San Antonio. Ellinger. Utah trying to bring some pressure. It was picked up, and that one is incomplete off the hands of Colin Johnson. Tariq Lewis with the coverage. You know, one thing about Texas in this bowl game, they are playing this game without a coordinator on both sides of the ball. Both coordinators were either reassigned or let go after the end of the regular season. Todd Orlando fired other coaching changes. So Tom Herman himself is going to call the plays in this Alamo Bowl. Mike Yersich has already been announced as the new offensive hire. Chris Ash from Rutgers, the head coach who was relieved of his duties midway through this year. He's going to be the new defensive coordinator. Neither coaching in this game, so it's an unusual scenario. On second down, a handoff, and Utah right there. Just stuff it for a loss. John Penasini, one of the seniors, playing his final game with the Utes. Right in the backfield, right off the staff. Yeah, when you're talking about beef, when you're talking about girth, they've got two big guys on the inside. And you see Penasini right there with a great arm over, good hand use, and then you see his buddy, Lucky Foe, too, come in there and help him. These guys are 330 plus. You're going to have a tough time running between the tackles on these guys, especially how athletic they are, given the fact that these are two 330 pound Mack trucks inside there that can move. 
That's third and 11. Those big guys stay on the field for these passing downs. Utah plays its best players a lot of snaps. Ellinger, pocket starts to collapse. He's going down. Got ripped to the turf, and I think that was big number 99 who got there. Yeah, that's Lecky Fochu, the guy who can just go ahead and push the pocket, push the pocket. You saw Bradley and I coming off the right side. He tried to throw an inside spin and got stuck, but he just kept working at it. Sam Ellinger had nowhere to go, and that is called team pass rush right there. That's how Kyle, Kyle Whittingham wants it played. Our Lexus impact players and making an impact early in this game. Those two guys in the middle of the Utah defense. We'll see Roshan Johnson. And we talked about Zach Shackelford as uh, we go along here. But those two in the middle making an impact on that possession, forcing the punt. Utah with the punt return and trying to bounce it to the outside. Couldn't quite get there. Damari Simpkins took a big hit at the end of that play. 5.56 to go. First quarter. Utah gets the ball back down 3 0. Attention the under made it I need some more. All right, national championship game looming Monday, January 13th. How about that quarterback matchup, Burrow against Trevor mm. Lawrence? I mean you have two tremendous dual threat athletes. Look, Joe Burrow, do not underestimate how good this kid is as far as his ability to run. And you saw what Trevor Lawrence can do. Ohio State was sitting there going, look at him go. Now, those run plays were some of the biggest plays Absolutely. of the game. It for broke Clemson. it open. Broke it open. Uh, Utah gets the ball for the second time. We may well see a little bit more of Zach Moss on this possession. A first down run of three yards for the All-American running back for the Utes playing his final game. And a running back who got hurt in a bowl game last year. It would have been very easy for him to tap out of this one, but he wanted to play. Yeah, the seniors for the most part of Utah wanted to finish. Wanted, they really enjoyed the college experience and really wanted to tap finish their season off here with a win. Moss left side running. There's that power straight ahead surge for a first down plus a yard. That's what we're talking about by a guy who's a slasher, a downhill runner. Look, Caden Stearns, the safety from Texas, number seven, came up and chopped him down pretty good, got him on the ground. He's going to have to have that answer for Zach Moss all day long because if he starts going, he starts breaking them open, and you see the Texas defensive backs turning those hits down, then they've got him right where they want him. Under five minutes to go, first quarter from San Antonio. They'll play action. Huntley going deep left side. That is incomplete. I thought there was a hole. There was a handful of jerseys. I mean, there was an obvious hole there. I don't know how you missed that. I mean, we're, we're sitting here, what, 100 yards away from this, and we can see that as plain as day, and the referee is backpedaling down the sideline and misses that? Wow. That's not good. That's not good right there. Jalen Green was a guy, I mean, it looked to me like he had, was locked on Damari Simpkins. But no flag. Yeah, that's a that's an easy call right there. The, those are the kind of things that you have to call in order to make sure the game is competitively fair. I mean, that, that's just an easy call. Well, Simpkins looked to me almost like he was limping off the field there after that play. Well, Huntley from the shotgun pressure came. He finds his man across the middle and a big booming hit after a gain of about six. And that is Joseph Osai, Samson Nakua, somehow hung on to the ball. But this is what we're talking about. We talked about Joseph Osai. He is a big man now who can run, who can play many different positions, and he's going to have to be a playmaker for them tonight. If you're talking about a team that can establish some kind of physicality against Utah, which Utah didn't like to see against Oregon, Joseph Asai is the kind of guy that needs to have those kind of hits all night long. Third and four, Huntley with the pressure coming, finds a man wide open, and it's dropped. Devontae Henry Cole not only had a first down, he had a lot more, and he could not hang on to the ball. Look, obviously that was a busted assignment there somewhere in the secondary. They sent some pressure and some extra rushers in the middle, and you saw the running back just leak out outside here on the perimeter. And they don't have him covered. That's That's got to be a big play right there. That's just a... That, that's a drop right there that may come back to haunt him, but that's a good play call on the part of Utah as far as anticipating pressure. And Tyler Huntley getting the ball out of his hands quick. You just have to finish that play. Wow. Missed opportunity big time for the Utes to this punt. 
Fair catch signal came late, and then Jamison bobbled the ball, but he fell on it inside the 10 to avoid uh, disaster. The Longhorns fortunate on both ends. The last play from scrimmage of that one to get the ball back. Well, New Year's Day is tomorrow. It's one of the great days of college football on the calendar every year, and we get it started with two really interesting matchups. The Outback Bowl, one Eastern on ESPN, Minnesota and Auburn, Big Ten, SEC. Same conference matchup in the Citrus Bowl on ABC at one Eastern. Michigan and Alabama, two Blue Bloods, will battle it out in Orlando, Florida. So that gets the day started tomorrow with the Outback and the Citrus Bowls before the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl. A day for college football, New Year's Day. And a night for college football tonight here on New Year's Eve from San Antonio. First and 10 for Ellinger and the Texas offense. A little option style play. Around the corner they go for a gain across the 10 to about the 11 yard line. And that's the first carry for Roshan Johnson, who is really an interesting story for this Texas team. Yeah, this is a guy who switched to running back from quarterback during the preseason, right before their first game of the season. Ellinger designed quarterback run. Breaking tackles gets close, and I think he got the first down. This is something that Tom Herman alerted us to. Oh, we have an injury. We got the guy down. A Utah player is on the turf and hurting. Well, already thin in the secondary. That's not the primary concern, but Nephi Sewell, who is starting for the first time as a Utah player, transfer from Nevada. And Nephi Sewell holding that. I mean, he's moving around. That's a good sign, but he's holding that head and neck area. So we can only hope that uh, Nephi is okay. They will be extra careful. Yeah, anytime you're dealing with injuries around the torso, or around the head and neck area, I should say, you can see right there, he just hit him with the front of his face mask, top of his helmet, hit Sam Ellinger as he was trying to get low and kind of wrap him up and get him on the ground. When your head and your neck gets jammed back into your shoulders like that, that is not a good situation. That does not feel good. It looks like he's, hopefully he's okay. Yeah, it's a good sign that he was moving around. It's a better sign that he's sitting up. I mean, you can imagine how scary that is, even just that sensation. His head went right into the thigh, I think, of Ellinger. Yeah, you can see him explaining it to the doctors and trainers out there. He just said, look, I was trying to get down and keep my head up. My neck got jammed back into my shoulders. That produces what everybody who's played football know, is known as, is known as a stinger. That's just not a good situation. You don't want to get yourself caught in that body position if you can help it. So good news. Nephi Sewell runs off the field. Uh, Texas's offense first and ten starting with a very poor field position but it bought themselves a little breathing room here. Three nothing lead for the Longhorns. Johnson is the running back alongside Ellinger. Going to throw it on first down. Over the top. Looking for Johnson incomplete. There was a little bit of contact there. Josh Nurse with the coverage. But you see, when they have one safety in the middle of the field and they're manned up across the board, something Utah likes to do upwards of 70% of the snaps, this is where they're going to want to take their shots outside. Now, you see here, Josh Nurse being physical down the field. You see him putting his hands on him, bodying him up. The referees obviously are letting them play. Heck, they missed an obvious holding call on the drive previous to this, so they're going to let them play a little bit, but expect the ball to be in the air whenever Utah plays the coverage they just played. One safety in the middle, man to man across the board. Some shifting for Texas. And a handoff right side with a nice hole and a big burst. That's Johnson. The converted quarterback who had never played running back until fall camp, and he's really had a nice freshman year. And what's the opposite of single high? You have double high safety. That's what Utah ran this time. That's when offenses go, okay, you're going to have two safeties back. Don't bring an extra guy down the box. We'll run it. 
Good protection again. Texas has done a good job of that. Ellinger overthrew his man. Yeah, he had him open out, out there on the boundary. A nice little comeback route. He just sailed it too high. They, they have some players open. Sam just has to get the ball down a little bit. And he has to be a little bit more accurate with it there. Marcus Washington was was open there on the boundary. And this is something that Sam talked about last night as far as wanting to be more accurate, wanting to be more consistent as far as his base, his footwork, his mechanics. So he could deliver the ball to this very talented wide receiver group. Yeah, that was a missed opportunity there. Second and ten for the Longhorns. Ellinger kind of a delayed handoff. And this time Johnson got away from one, not a second. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Bradley and I, first time we've mentioned his name since the start of the telecast. Consensus All-American player, one of the greats to ever wear that Utah uniform. Yeah, this is a guy who can play the run and the pass. Very disciplined as far as his technique is concerned. Playing with good hand usage, good pad level, good recognition. And he's got some guys who play the same way on that defense, particularly at linebacker. Keep an eye on 13, Francis Bernard, and 20, Devin Lloyd. These guys are going to be all over the field making plays. So it's third and ten. Here comes pressure. Ellinger throws across the middle. The catch and the open field tackle. Big one for Utah because there was room to go after that. Brennan Eagles got tripped up by Terrell Burgess. Yeah, they look like they sent some extra rushers. They said either five or six rushers in that were man to man across the board. You see they drop out big John Penasini there and he misses the tackle but that's a great job of rallying by Terrell Burgess because otherwise if he doesn't get him Brennan Eagles is out the gate. He's down the sideline and they've got a big play. So this is what Utah does. They will bring the pressure. They think they have the athletes in the back end who can cover and then tackle if you do catch it. And that's a great job right there of Terrell Burgess presenting or preventing what could have been a very big play. Ryan Gruchevsky, who missed the last part of the year as the punter with a broken collarbone, back playing in this Alamo Bowl for Texas and a high punt, fair catch made by Damari Simpkins. So Utah's defense holds and they'll get the ball back. Meanwhile, more bowl games coming up on Thursday on ESPN. Boston College and Cincinnati Bearcats had a great year. That's the Ticket Smarter Birmingham Bowl and then the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl, Indiana and Tennessee. Tennessee showed some signs this season of sort of getting back to their level. Indiana, great story. They had a, one of their best years in a long time, the Hoosiers. So college football, not just the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl and the national championship game. We got some others still to go before this 2019 2020 season is over. A little dump down pass on first down from Huntley to Moss for a positive game. You guys have mentioned Joseph Asai's name a couple of times. I had a chance to speak to him this week. A great kid. He moved from Nigeria to Houston, Texas on Christmas Eve when he was 10. His uncle taught him how to play football in the beginning. He hated it. He told me it was way too confusing. It reminded him of rugby. But now he is an absolute sponge. He said he wants to practice 24 7. This guy has huge upside. Osai and the defense on the field. Moss had nowhere to go. Maybe got a yard on second down. Juwan Mitchell, linebacker who plays alongside Joseph Osai with the tackle. Jawan Mitchell and Joseph Osai together are two very, very active players. They're a little thin at the linebacker position, but these two guys play the game the way it's supposed to. You saw Jawan fill the hole right there. Great pad level, great striking ability. The Texas defense looks like they've come to play tonight, and Utah's offense is going to have to pick it up. That, is the end of the that first was quarter. the final play of quarter number one. Some defense being played here in uh, San Antonio. A uh, trophy on the line tonight, New Year's Eve night in Texas. And at the end of the first quarter, it is the Longhorns with a 3 nothing lead. Welcome back to the Valero Alamo Bowl as a part of Capital One Bowl Mania on a beautiful New Year's Eve night in San Antonio, Texas, high above. You can see the Alamo Dome don't there in the uh, foreground uh, kind of a different game than the way it started Texas flew down the field the first time they had the ball since then the defenses have taken over and on uh, this third down play Utah keeps the ball on the ground and had nowhere to go so the Longhorns defense first play of the second quarter comes up with a big stop yeah, they're getting a lot of penetration up front you see the linebackers have been very active attacking the line of scrimmage 
Utah is going to have to do a better job of getting the ball downhill and getting on the second level quick. They can't have long developing running plays because the movement of the Texas front is really causing them problems right now. Third straight game they have uh, had a very slow start offensively. That's kind of been a theme for Utah as this season has gone on. This angled punt to Sean Jamison looks like he wants to return it. He'll take it inside the 25 with a burst of speed. There goes Jamison across midfield to the 30. He beats the punter down the sideline inside the 10. What a return. That's just a tremendous job of getting the ball out here to the numbers and using his speed. You see the sustained blocks down the field. Just put a move on and just using his speed down the field. This is the kind of energy Texas wanted to play with here early in this football game. And quite honestly, it looks like a little bit of that hangover that Utah was experiencing coming off the Pac-12 game is still lingering right now. They're not playing with the same energy. And Texas is knocking on the door here at going up 10. 71 yards, so a big play in special teams. Ellinger in the offense on the field with great. That's an understatement field position. But on the first down play, Deontay Ingram got driven backwards. So Utah is going to try to make the Longhorns earn it. Fo two right in the middle of that defense. It's second a goal, Texas. Yeah, if I'm Tom Herman, I'm not really trying to run the ball between the guards. I'm trying to get out on the perimeter. I'm trying to let Sam Ellinger use his running ability, see if they can option some of the ends here, put them under duress and kind of use their speed to get outside running up the middle now nah, I don't think that's going to work very well got to get out here on the perimeter get out on the edges from the shotgun a little fake and he does get on the perimeter throws touchdown welcome back Colin Johnson who's made a big impact in the first half The big punt return set it up and Texas takes advantage. That's a great play call by Tom Herman right there. Now running a little bit of the play action. Getting Ellinger out on the perimeter. Change the launch point as they call it in coaching terminology. And you see it right here. You see the defense starts to pursue. Colin Johnson just is able to find a zone void in the back end. And it's six. So the extra point up and it is good. Well, you weren't kidding. The Longhorns, with all the chaos, coordinators fired, coaches reassigned. What is there to play for? They're the team that's controlling this game so far. Yeah, Kyle Willingham's going to have to get his guys together, get them going. The Valero Alamo Bowl is fueled by Valero. And in part by Capital One, what's in your wallet? Uh, both teams were at SeaWorld, part of the lead up to this uh, Alamo Bowl. <laughs> if you know Kyle Whittingham, <laughs> you can imagine how thrilled he was that they showed that video at the Big Bowl luncheon in front of everybody. He's got a more serious look on his face right now because Texas is kind of taking it to Utah. A uh, guy, Kyle Whittingham, who has one of the all time great records in the history of bowl games 11 and 2. And, uh, you know, for coaches who coach a certain number of games, there's been nobody who's been better than Kyle Whittingham. Great track record, practices hard, treats these games seriously. And you mentioned it after that last Texas touchdown. He's got to get his team going. Yeah, they seem a little bit flat right now. They need to really get a big play on offense. They had a potential big one. And Devontae Henry Cole drops the pass on, on the running back wheel route down the sideline. They're going to see if they can produce something down the field to get them a little bit more excited and get this game spread out a little. Tyler Huntley under center. He's going to play fake and drop back to pass on first down. Pressure that he had nowhere to go. He ran right into the pressure. Taquan Graham, the defensive end, was waiting for him. Yeah, it was very good coverage down the field one-on-one. -on -one. And then the pass rush just kept him hemmed in. You see them all. You see one, two, three, four, five rushers basically rushing. You see they get great, keep great contain out there on the perimeter, and he has nowhere to go. That's how you play team defense. I'll tell you this. For Texas to have struggled the way they struggled in the middle part of the year, they have come out tonight, and they are playing disciplined defense. They're playing fast, getting a lot of penetration. And the back end where there's so many young players, they're doing a good job of covering down the field for the most part. We saw a quick shot of Craig Nivar, who's sort of the acting defensive coordinator for this game. More pressure on Huntley. He fitted in there, though. And Utah gets back to the original line of scrimmage with Fotheringham. 
I mentioned off the top of the broadcast, Utah was banged up in the secondary. Well, guys are dropping for Texas as well. Chris Brown, the corner, is in the locker room getting his ankle evaluated. And Brandon Jones, the safety, the lifeline of this defense, the senior captain is not playing in this game as well. So depleted on both ends in the secondary. Thank you, Cart. Another third down for Utah. They haven't converted one yet. Huntley, quick hitter, and now a catch and turn up field. It's going to depend on the spot, but I think Samson Dakua got the first down just barely, but he got there. Yeah, he did a nice job of converting himself to a runner quickly after the catch and getting the ball north and south. Does a nice job here of just finding a soft spot in the zone and then getting it north and south. And you see right there, that's exactly how they teach wide receivers when they catch short passes like that and they need to get the first down. Get the ball north and south. Don't mess around. And let's get some first downs together here and see if we can move this ball. That feels like a big one for the Utes. They're going to run that sort of jet sweep action. That has been a productive play for them this year. Terrell Perriman, the redshirt freshman, has not had a big role in the regular season. They love the way he practiced leading into this bowl game. They told us he may be a part of the game plan. That is going to be a big part of the Utah future at that wide receiver spot. They'll, they'll run those jet sweeps to one of their tight ends, Brent Keithy. In fact, he's a guy we have not said his name yet in he, this Alamo Bowl. They need to get him involved. No question. He's a guy who's a matchup problem for defenses because of the fact that although he lines up at H-back tight end, he has wide receiver skills. High formation and a play fake. Huntley rolling out. Huntley's going to run the ball. Tyler Huntley gets the first down and gets out of bounds. Voids. What would have been a big hit. KOA was in pursuit, but Huntley gets another Utah first down. Yeah, they're doing a nice job still. The movement up front, doing a good job of mixing up their blitzes, showing that they're going to blitz, dropping out, bringing different kinds of pressures, and really making life very uncomfortable right now for Tyler Huntley. He has not been able to feel settled in the pocket so far in this football game on a consistent basis. In Texas, this is what they have to do. When you're under man like this, you have to be multiple in terms of the types of things that you run, but you can't risk too much because you don't want to have assignment bus. And off straight ahead run for a gain of a couple of yards, maybe three. It hurt these Texas players and coaches to see Todd Orlando get fired. I mean, he was a guy, the defensive coordinator for all three years under Tom Herman was his coordinator at the University of Houston. I mean, Todd Orlando was so popular and well liked by his players and a guy who has a great reputation around college football but the Longhorns defense just did not play up to expectation level they felt they needed to make a change but you could tell the pain in the voices when we asked about their former coach how much it hurt him Huntley steps up kept his balance still on his feet now will go down they're swarming the Longhorns defense is They said they were going to be multiple in the different types of pressures that they were going to bring. And here you see Caden Stearns coming off the edge. And right from there, then now it's tough right now for Tyler Huntley to keep his eyes down the field. Now he's trying to figure out where's the next guy going to come from? Where's the third guy going to come from? And he doesn't, he's not even able to read out the play down the field because of the fact that Texas is being so diverse and very smart with how they're trying to pressure the pass. Somebody moved on third and 12. It is so loud inside the dome. That's going to be against Utah. Ball start. 55. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. That's going to encourage the Longhorn fans who are here in big numbers tonight to be even louder. Yeah, sure. This is like a home game for Texas. And for Utah, they're going to have to deal with that crowd noise. They're going to have to make sure, Tyler Huntley in particular, is going to have to make sure that snap count infractions like this are not something that become commonplace. You have to make sure everybody knows what it is. Everybody gets off on the ball. Nobody's moving because now you're in a third and long situation where the crowd's just going to get louder. And now Texas is going to be emboldened to even send more pressures and get more diverse with how they're trying to get after the quarterback. They rush just three. Huntley throws short middle and that catch will come up well short to midfield. Almost a push as opposed to a tackle to get Jalen Dixon on the turf. Well, it's fourth down. Kyle Whittingham 
maybe thought about it for a moment, but it's fourth down and seven. He's going to send the punt team on the field. That's a nice, smart, safe strategy on the part of Texas. Run three, just rush three, drop with eight, make sure you keep vision on the quarterback, and then just run and tackle the ball carrier. Looks like we got another defensive back down. Is that Jalen Green? It sure is. Who's going to be left to play in this game in the secondary on both sides? Oh, Jalen sits up, the sophomore from Houston. Two different times in this first half, the Utes have gotten right to the 50 yard line. I guess the nose of the ball. Good to see Jalen Green get up and walk off by himself. And the nose of the football is just across midfield. But essentially, Utah has not been able to get past the 50 yard line in this first half. Yeah, I think the difference in the game so far, as far as Texas defense is concerned, is how quick Texas front seven looks compared to Utah's offensive line and the amount of penetration that they're getting. And they are really just making Tyler Huntley feel uncomfortable. An angled punt toward the sideline. So we'll see where they spot it. Decent punt there. The Longhorns will start at the 14 when we come back to San Antonio. Shaping up to be a good night for Texas. They lead 10 nothing. is going to overtime. Second overtime. Third overtime. Will turn the corner. Touchdown. No more kicks. They need eight to keep the game going. Rocky throws. Incomplete. That matches the largest comeback in bowl history. Well, we were here that night here in San Antonio, an all-time, all-time great game. You heard that right. Oregon led that game 31-0 at halftime. Mac Brown stood where you're standing here tonight, Lewis, mm -hmm. and at the start of the second half said, Dave, this game is not over. I didn't believe him. He was right. TCU came from behind. The College Football Bowl Association recently named that the third greatest bowl game in history. And since then, this game has had a history of dramatic finishes, upsets, lots of points on the board. We'll see how this one turns out. But Colin Johnson with the catch and run on first down for Texas. With Colin Johnson, this is 6 6 versus a 5 11 Tariq Lewis. That's a matchup they're going to want to exploit all night long. And anytime you see them rotate down the single high coverage, that's where they're going. Alligator well, kept the ball. That was a good decision, but Utah did well to keep that to a small game Bradley and I with the ankle tackles with second down. Yeah, I think Texas is playing the type of game and they're seeing the type of defenses that they were hoping to see. Utah's going to have to mix it up place them too high make sure that the corners are protected because I think they're dialed in right now and, and Sam Ellinger is dialed in right now as far as whenever he sees it post snap that he's got one on ones out here with his with his high risers he's going to chuck the ball down the field and try and get some big chunks. We haven't even heard from Devin Duvernay, the guy who leads the country in catches. But Colin Johnson has been the playmaker on the outside so far in this one. There's a catch on the left side by Brennan Eagles. Stopped short to set up third down and maybe three and a half, four yards. Hey, you made the point, Lewis, a couple times in this first half. Texas has made plays down the field. There have been even more opportunities. Ellinger hasn't been totally perfect. They've had some extra chances. Third and three here, close to midfield, under seven minutes to go, first half. Texas has controlled this game so far. Kitchens leader, Devin Duvernay with a spectacular play. It's first down, Texas inside the 20. That's the good old slot fade that they call it. You can see Duvernay here in the slot. He's just going to take off, stutter him at the line of scrimmage. They got man-to-man -man coverage. And from there, he's just going to hand fight him down the field. And Duvernay is tough now. You can bang on him all you want down the field. He's one of those guys who can, who can catch those 50-50 balls. That's his great play design, taking advantage of a guy who had 103 receptions in 2019. Uh-oh, here we go. Duvernay got the pitch back. 
I don't know if he was looking to throw the ball or what, but in the end, that did not work for Texas. Devin Lloyd was a big reason why Utah comes up with a nice defensive play to push the Longhorns back. Yeah, that's a nice response by Utah. We talked about it already. Devin Lloyd and Francis Bernard are two guys who are going to have to make plays. And you see Devin Lloyd right here on the edge of your screen. What a great job of getting vision across the formation. He sees Duvernay coming across the formation. He misses him initially, but does a great job, takes a great angle to cut him off and prevent a big play. That's smart football on the part of Utah. So now Texas, after that 40-yard gain, they go backwards by eight yards. It's second and very long. Got Johnson on the right side. Ellinger steps up in the pocket. He's going to throw. That one is knocked up in the air, but grabbed out of the air by the Longhorns receiver. That was good coverage by Josh Nurse. But in the end, Texas hung on to the ball. Alvante Woodard with the catch. What you saw right there from Sam. Ellinger is exactly what pro scouts want to see and what pro coaches want to see. You saw a guy who at the top of his drop pushed up into the pocket, bought more time, scanned the football field, and put a nice throw on the receiver there for a completion. That's the kind of thing he needs to do if he wants to take his game to the next level. Third and 11 for the junior quarterback. Low snap. He'll spin away. Nice job by Ellinger. Now he's going to try to run for it. Lowers his shoulders. And got close, but was stopped a couple yards short. Would Tom Herman even think about going for it on fourth and short from inside the 10? It's a bowl game. You're the underdog. Why wouldn't you think about it? I think here's one of these situations again where you got to get, if you're going to go for it here, get Ellinger out on the perimeter again where he can use his athletic ability. Put some players in conflict. Make them think about it as far as play action is concerned. Ball handling has to be something that's emphasized. And they've shown that they can do it so far. They did it in the last touchdown drive. See if they do the same now. now Tom's walking down to one of the officials, so I think he's going to use. They have three timeouts. He's happy to let the clock wind. And he's going to use one of those timeouts. First start, and think time about out it. Of the half, Texas. So Texas with fourth and two coming up here. I mean, it's really been an impressive first half for the Longhorns. Big play coming up when we come back to San Antonio right after this. Stream your favorite sports, stories, and series with ESPN Plus, Disney Plus, and Hulu. Get all three for just $12.99 a month. All right, here we go. Out of the timeout. To Herman Ford. Fourth and from inside the Uyghur. Duvernay comes in motion. A big, big play. Has not really been there much in this first half for Utah, but in a big spot, they forced the early throw, and the Longhorns gambled and didn't get it. Yeah, it's a nice job of manning up there to that formation, to that bunch formation here down at the bottom of your screen. And then you see once again, a tremendous job by Devin Lloyd of making sure that Ellinger doesn't have a clean throwing lane in order to throw the football. And again, the defensive backs were able to sort out that bunch formation very, very well. That's great team defense down there in a very difficult situation. That's a tough route combination to deal with, especially when you have a quarterback who's athletic as Ellinger getting out on the perimeter. Great I, team defense. I, Lewis, am not second-guessing the head coach. Me neither. Yeah. I, I mean, as far as they have been moving the football and how Sam has been giving them problems and the secondary has been giving them problems, I don't know why they just didn't throw it up for some kind of jump ball situation considering the size advantage they have. Yeah, maybe you could quibble with the play call. I think right, that's but a good going point. for it. No Ruling on the previous play was an incomplete pass with the ball hitting the ground before the receiver was able to gain possession. This play is now under video review. Well, it'd be better be better for Utah if it's not intercepted. I mean, I, I thought Javelin Gidry was sort of trying to knock the ball down. They're going to take a look. If it's an interception, they have the ball on the one. If not, they get it at the eight. And I, I thought it definitely hit the turf, but I don't know. Maybe I think he didn't. picked it off. So we'll take a timeout while they look at it in the replay booth and be back to San Antonio after this. While we were gone, this is the replay they were looking at from the booth. And in fact, Javelin Gidry, I mean, it was a great play, except for it hurts Utah. It was an interception. <laughs> How often do you see the opposing coach thrilled that he threw a pick? <laughs> because now look where Utah has to start this drive at the one. First and ten. 
Huntley handoff Zach Moss pounding his way forward and that's what the big guy does just at least a little bit of breathing room. Yeah that is a good tough run just to get the ball off of the goal line and just get a little bit of room to operate. So I can tell you this just keep an eye on Texas defensive line and keep an eye on their linebackers. They are playing it downhill. They are playing the run first. They've Utah has really shown no ability to hurt them in the passing game. And they better have an answer for it especially when you're backed up like this. Texas has the two timeouts. They have a chance to get the ball back with great field position if they can stuff Utah here. Another handoff. Moss jumps it to the right side, and Zach Moss will get close. And I think he did get a Utah first down, which is huge. So two carries to the All American running back for 10 yards. That's a nice job of running with vision right there by Zach Moss because everything was stuffed up inside. And what you see here. As Joseph aside just gets caught inside gets caught looking at the football trying to get on the plate too much and not keeping outside arm free and making sure he has force. That's a nice hard tough run. By that Zach Moss quick snap before Utah or before Texas was organized and the first catch of this first half for Brant Keithy. He is a dynamic Texas native who as the season went on became one of Utah's best offensive players. Every time you turn on their tape the guy is making plays just like you just saw. Oh, more quick tempo Huntley dumps it short that's Moss who's a pretty good pass catcher out of the backfield across the 35 out to the 38 yard line. They're attacking Texas's defense down three men right now. We know about Brandon Jones. Chris Brown is not coming back with an ankle and Jalen Green is probable to return with an ankle as well. Huntley trying to bark some instructions to a teammate. What a hit. That's court. Jaquist, who is a former walk on. He's a San Antonio kid. He's hardly played this year on regular defense for Texas, but he's playing a lot so far tonight. Yeah, this is a guy who 57 is showing up all over the football field. He's got fresh legs and he is using them tonight. And you can see what Utah is trying to do already is up to tempo. As Clark just pointed out, they're down a couple players. Guys are getting injured. Kyle Whittingham sees it and he goes, hey, look, let's up to tempo. Let's see if we can wear them out a little bit. We need something to get the momentum on our side offensively. Taquan Graham on a knee with 124 on the clock. The thing about this for Utah is it's third and one. That clock has been moving. Utes trying to get something going here before halftime. Speaking of halftime, coming up on the Mercedes-Benz halftime report. Navy, what a win for the midshipmen. Just a great finish. And in true Navy fashion, bold right to the end. The Belk Bowl was a thriller. Just an incredible story with Lynn Bowden in Kentucky. So all that, plus a look ahead to the great college football action tomorrow and uh, the national championship game in a couple weeks. Reese, Dez, David Pollock will be with you from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena on Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report. All right, third and one. Utah first has to convert if they want to have a chance to get anything out of this two minute drive Huntley well they started the play and then they blew it dead second charge timeout of the half Texas but Texas called a timeout so it will they be probably are going to have to put a little time back on the clock we'll see Texas will get organized here New Year's Day tomorrow on ESPN the ESPN app and I think the most beautiful scene in sports the Rose Bowl from Pasadena five Eastern number six Oregon it's a great matchup the uniforms will look good in the Rose Bowl Wisconsin and Oregon and Georgia Baylor from New Orleans the Sugar Bowl 845 Eastern both on ESPN our uh, Macy's what's in store New Year's Day Bowl games the, the two games to get it started Lewis I think are terrific matchups no doubt about that look that Michigan Alabama game you want to talk about some heavyweights? You want to talk about throwback football? Both of these coaches, Coach Harbaugh and Coach Saban, you know at heart, these guys are three yards in a cloud of dust type of football coaches. That's going to be a great heavyweight matchup right there. That, that's, that's something you would pay the price of admission to go see. All right, so out of the timeout, Tyler Huntley and the Utah offense third and one. Huntley handoff Moss straight ahead big game into Texas territory Zach Moss all the way down to the 35 first time Utah has been across midfield all half yeah, that's a nice play design as far as bringing Brant Keithy across the formation 
You see, they really did. They just read the end, hand the ball up there to Zach Moss, and he's downhill north and south with a big game. Huntley dancing around, whistles one over to the right sideline. That's caught by Solomon Enos, the sophomore, who had a nice finish to the regular season. He also stepped out of bounds to stop the clock with 59 seconds to go. Maybe second down and two for Utah. Finally into Texas territory. Took him the whole half. Yeah, there's two things I like. Legally downfield, number eight of the offense. But no penalty. First down. Well, my I never saw the penalty flag on the turf. But they call the penalty against Utah, so that's going to negate that gain and move the Utes back farther. Well, I. So what I. All right, they, they spotted the ball there. They, they need to get this right, obviously. The rest of the officiating crew didn't know a penalty had been called either. Well, that's a big difference, goes without saying. Instead of the 28 ish, it's back at the 40. Utah has all their timeouts and a minute to go. So they have plenty of time to at minimum get into field goal range. They would like more. Huntley throws middle, kind of behind his target, incomplete. Big hit after the play, but that, that was within the course of action intended for Derek Vickers. Texas doing a nice job there, pressure and off of Huntley's right side, and he was able to identify, able to identify the open wide receiver. He just has to get the ball and just put it on him here. They've done a nice job of putting Texas on their heels here as far as upping the tempo, really getting Zach Moss going, getting him out here on the perimeter. Now they just have to get some of this down and distance, some of this yardage back so they have a manageable third down. Second and 15. Huntley over the top took a huge hit and throws it away. His receiver cut off the route. Meanwhile, Tyler Huntley just was rocked by Joseph Osai. We've been calling him Osai's name all night long. He is just all over the place. You see here, he just beats the tackle with an inside pass rush, one on one pass rush. I'm telling you, this is a guy who is a tremendous athlete, and he is carrying the day as far as making Tyler Huntley uncomfortable. There was some miscommunication down the field as far as. The passer was still in the pocket. The forward pass was thrown into an area where there's no eligible receiver. The penalty places the ball at the spot of the foul with loss of down. Well, fourth another down. delay. It's not fourth down. It's third down. This has not been the cleanest series for this officiating crew. That was a second down play, so you lose the down. It'll be third down after the intentional grounding. So we need to get this right. John McDade, SEC referee. Well, now, now I guess we got to check with Texas and make sure they want to accept the penalty. Intentional grounding was the call. Uh, you can understand on that particular penalty why the flag would come in late. Mm -hmm. The intentional grounding foul occurred with under a minute left in the half and carries a 10 second runoff. Texas has elected to enforce a 10 second runoff. Utah has elected not to use a timeout. Would the game clock operator please put the game clock at 40 seconds, four zero seconds. All right. And you can see Joseph Messiah up here at the top of your screen. And you just see the inside pass rush and the kind of havoc he is just creating. And then you can see right here, quarterback still in the pocket. That pressure is causing Tyler Huntley to make some bad decisions. And it's something that Texas was really counting on in this football game as far as them being able to give Utah's front multiple looks, use their athleticism. They know they couldn't really match up with them size for size, but their athleticism is what's winning the day as far as the pass rush. Now they're winding the clock. It is third down. They never came on the microphone and corrected that, but it is third down and very long. Huntley over the top. Tyler Huntley, that pass is knocked away incomplete. Chris Adamora, good coverage. Yeah, that's a nice job by Chris Adamora, one on one down the seam. And these are the kind of plays right here as a defensive back. You got to make sure you don't commit pass interference, time up the receiver's eyes and hands, and then just punch the pocket and get the ball out. That's as good a play as you can make as a defensive back. I mean, Utah thought they were going to be in scoring position. Instead, they're going to have to punt the ball away, which is understandable because if they were to go for it and not get it, you'd give Texas a chance with a timeout and a kicker with a big leg to maybe get some points on the board themselves. 
very disappointing sequence for Utah. Ben Lennon punts it end over end. And it's going to bounce. And did it cross the plane of the goal line? Apparently it did. That's a touchback. Probably won't matter. But the ball's going to come out to the 20 yard line anyway, with seven seconds to go until halftime. Well, we got Lewis Riddick with us here tonight. Lewis is doing double duty this week. He's got college football here tonight all over this one. The Bills and the Texans, that's our game. Wild Card Weekend starts on ESPN and ABC Saturday, 435 Eastern. Really interesting matchup, I think. Bills and the Texans from Houston, you'll be there. Yeah, no doubt about that. Look, you've got Josh Allen, one of the young, up-and-coming quarterbacks. Tremendous athleticism, tremendous size. Then you got that Texas defense, the return of J.J. Watt. Along with Whitney Merciless, they can get after the quarterback. Texas is going to be content just to hand the ball off. They'll get some yardage on the final play of the first half, but the clock runs to zero. And the Longhorns fans are going to roar their approval. Texas came ready to play. Yeah, this has been a great game plan on the part of Tom Herman and the Longhorns. Done everything they've wanted to do. And as you can see, the scoreboard, ref the scoreboard reflects it. 10 nothing Texas, Mercedes-Benz halftime report right after these messages. Welcome back to Capital One Bowl Mania. On the Welcome back to the Valero Alamo Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania on this beautiful New Year's Eve night in San Antonio, Texas. Just a few blocks from the actual Alamo here in the Dome where Texas played a heck of a first half. 10 nothing. they lead the number 11 Utes of the University of Utah. Our clutch delivery brought to you by Chipotle. And Lewis, you talked about it from the outset. Texas was going to try to get the ball in the hands of their big receivers. Yeah, Colin Johnson is one of those guys who is efficient, whether it's man-to-man -man coverage or as far as using his instincts as a route runner and finding open zone holes as he did there on the touchdown catch. This is a tremendous athlete, and I'll tell you, they, you can expect that Tom Herman will call his number a lot more here in the second half. Dave Fleming, Lewis Riddick, Paul Carcaterra back here in San Antonio as we start the second half. Utah will get the ball, and it's a special New Year's Eve edition of your favorite, my favorite, Kark after kick. Paul Carcaterra. Ah, uh, you got to be able to laugh at yourself. 2020, here we come. But I spoke to Kyle Whittingham right after the half, and obviously the running game is a problem. 47 yards, you got to get Zach Moss going. But it's more than that. It's picking up the blitz and having those opportunities with Tyler Huntley taking shots downfield. Defensively, he's happy with his defensive backs. I mean, they're down three guys. He feels like he's held up and are able to play that press man-to-man -man coverage. And it's interesting, it's not Moss, it's the true freshman Jordan Wilmore who is on the field. Huntley faked that fly sweep and took it straight ahead for a positive gain on first down. First play of scrimmage of the second half for Utah. Yeah, a little design run, a little quarterback counter with some pullers just to really try and get Tyler Huntley comfortable, get him running the football, and really get the dual threat capability of him working because I'll tell you, just as Clark said, Texas has been getting after him against the pass. He needs to get into a rhythm here and see if they can get some movement. So Huntley, the quarterback, and Moss back in now for this play at tailback, and they will fake it to Moss. Huntley keeps it. Tyler Huntley, some tough running there. He did surge forward and got enough for the first down. Caden Stearns, a sophomore, who is from here in the San Antonio area and told us the uh, Texas safety who made the tackle there. He played a bunch of games in this Alamo Dome, high school playoffs and whatnot, maybe even a couple of high school regular season games. He's been in this building a lot. Yeah, you can tell he's comfortable. He's made some big tackles so far in this football game early on against Zach Moss in there, getting Tyler Huntley on the ground in the open field situation. That's a nice job by the safety of preventing a big run. They're very proud of their tradition at Texas at that position. They've had some all-time greats. Under center, Huntley on first and ten. Another play fake. Stepping up in the pocket, he gets knocked down. 
Big number 99, Keandre Coburn, prevented what might have been a bigger gain on the ground for Huntley. Yeah, quite honestly, Huntley had Damari Simpkins open here on a nine route down the boundary. He just needed to push up in the pocket and keep his vision down the field and let that one go. So you, what you saw is they came out, ran the ball twice, then they set up the play action pass, and it was there for him to take the shot. He's just going to have to pull the trigger here. But they've been getting so much good pressure on him. I think his eyes come down very quickly now because he's kind of getting tired of getting hit back here in the pocket. Second and ten for Utah. Hand off left side. And a turn up field to the 40, no farther. That's Derek Vickers from his wide receiver spot who took the uh, handoff there. And the, the question looming over this whole game, Lewis, was would there be a hangover? Would Utah play like it did for almost the entirety of 2019? Or would they play the way they did against the Ducks of Oregon? Yeah, I think what you saw, especially offensively, they started to show some life when they upped the tempo and really started putting the pressure and stepping on the gas against the Texas defense. I would like to see them kind of do that a little bit right now to kind of like carry over some of that momentum they had late in the first half. Third and six. It'll be an empty backfield. One blitzer comes. Huntley hits his man across the field. Good open field tackle, though. On Solomon Enos, that was Chris Atamora who got him to the turf, and Utah's a yard short. Now, you would think that Kyle Whittingham would want to go for it, and it looks like he will. It's interesting, these fourth and short plays, Utah did not convert in that Pac-12 championship game. That was a big part of their loss. No question about it. You could tell the offensive coaches in particular were upset about the fact that this big offensive line needs to be able to dominate the line of scrimmage. There's really no excuse for them not being able to get enough surge where they could put, pick up a yard. This is one of these flashpoints in a football game that could really swing the momentum one way or another. And Utah's got to burn a timeout. Wow. Well, the play clock was down to seven. So even that, I mean, Kyle Whittingham knows this is a big moment here early in the third quarter. Texas with a 10-0 lead timeout at the Alamo Bowl. Utah is trying to snap some rough history in the eight years that they played the Pac-12 Conference Championship game. The loser of that game has never won a bowl game. 0 and 8. Utah, right now, is on track to keep that streak going. They trail 10 nothing, but fourth and one out of the timeout, their first possession of the second half. Yeah, I think this is a big, big moment in this football game. When you look at that offensive line, 315, 300. 340. They've got some horses up front. They've got to be able to move the line of scrimmage here. Boss behind Huntley. And Huntley's going to keep it. Huntley's going nowhere. Wow. Fourth and one. The last two games for Utah has been a disaster. Uh, their, their short yardage offense has not been good enough. And here they try to get out on the perimeter here with a little bit of a Zone read, and I can tell you this, Joseph Asai, number 46, has been all over this football field tonight. He's someone we talked about in the beginning of this game as being one of Texas' best athletes on the defensive side of the ball. And there you see him right there, just chasing down Tyler Huntley out there on the perimeter. This guy's having a whale of a game. I'm just surprised they didn't try and pound it just right down their throat because they have such a size advantage on the inside. Why try to get out on the perimeter in that situation? You know, they are not one of those spread teams. They run some spread, but they have under center quarterback snaps I and mean, they run a lot of plays under center yeah, but they did not do it there so now Ellinger and the Longhorns on the field tough guy run didn't gain huge yardage but maybe sent a message Keontae Ingram lowered his shoulders Sam Ellinger we told you he had a chance for some history tonight he has moved up to number two total offense single season in the history of Texas football. This is a good dual threat quarterback who's still continuing to develop as a passer as far as his accuracy is concerned. But he has given Utah problems all night. Your Texas quarterback standing alongside Colt McCoy and Vince Young. You're doing something. Finds Ingram. Turns it upfield. First down Texas inside the 25 and here come the penalty flags. So maybe extra yardage on the end of that run. Francis Bernard, the linebacker, got him to the turf, but maybe Personal foul. with the help of a penalty. Number 13, defense, grasping the face mask. Penalties half the distance to the goal line from the end of the run. Automatic first down. 
Yeah, you see Francis Bernard wasn't able to get out there on the perimeter in that man-to-man -man coverage situation. And when, when you're trying to catch up like that, you're trying to get the ball carrier on the ground because you know you're responsible for giving up an explosive play. Sometimes you panic like that. You just do whatever you can to get the guy on the ground. And then you're just putting your team in a worse situation by committing the penalty here in Texas is on a roll once again. Inside the 15, not quite first and goal, but close to it. First time Texas has completed a pass to a running back or a tight end. It's been all wide receivers so far. Ingram alongside Ellinger. That was low snap. It's about the third time that's happened. A throwback. Open. Caught. Touchdown. Ingram, two catches in a row, and Texas stops Utah on fourth down, takes it right in to open up the lead. Yeah, that's a nice play design. Roll everybody to the right here one way, and then just throw it back to the running back, Keontae Ingram, going back the other way. You see him sneak through the line of scrimmage. Utah, poor eye control, not really being able to hone in on their keys. That's just a great play call by Tom Herman here down on the goal line. Results in six. Extra point up and good. I mean, what a nice job here of Sam Allen. You're seeing the entire football field just making a nice, safe throw. Texas is on a roll now. 17 and nothing. Well, we talked about the quarterback tradition at the University of Texas. How about at Westlake High School? in Austin where Drew Brees one of the all-time greats at any level lit it up there came to this Alamo Bowl as a Purdue quarterback and was the MVP of an Alamo Bowl victory Sam Ellinger following in the footsteps at Westlake and maybe tonight in the footsteps of Drew Brees here inside the dome in San Antonio where the Texas Longhorns have just been super impressive an underdog in this game against a team that was one of the best in the regular season in college football all year long the numbers aren't huge for Sam Ellinger tonight, but he has been efficient, productive, and his Longhorns have a 17 nothing lead over the Utes, who have to be a little bit stunned. A touchback on the kickoff. Lewis, let's take another look at that touchdown play. Yeah, this is a great play design on the part of Texas. What you're going to see here, you're going to see the running back, Keontae Ingram, right here, and you're going to see him just sneak through the line of scrimmage. And really what you have here is you have a little bit of a miscommunication right here in this man-to-man -man situation. They try to pass it off. You can see the safety down here communicating with the corner, Josh Nurse, at the top of the screen as the motion comes across the screen. And you're going to see it right here. They're going to start communicating. They're going to wind up wanting to pass these two off. And you see they both cover the wide receiver. They lead the running back, Keontae Ingram, sneaking out of the backfield. Great play design by Tom Herman for the touchdown. So Utah, it's still early in the third quarter. Huntley dropped the snap, and that play sort of busted from the start. A penalty flag thrown. Huntley found a way to complete the pass to Keithy, the Personal tight end. foul, grasping the face mask. And number 46, defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. So that could have been terrible for the Utes all the way around. Instead, it turns into a real good play. Yeah, I'll tell you what you have here is Joseph Asai again, just all over the place, just terrorizing Tyler Huntley all night long. Inadvertently grabs the face mask here and really bails Utah out of a situation where once again, they're under duress. They are really just violating the pocket here for Tyler Huntley and he's just not able to get into a rhythm on his own. I mean who thought in this game that on both sides of the ball Texas would be dominating the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they have. But they said that they were going to throw him multiple looks and really try to change up a lot of the things they were trying to do because they didn't think they, they could just sit there and play the physical game with a man for man. 12 yards plus the 15 yard penalty now on first down into Texas territory with the run for Moss. Keep an eye on Jalen Green, number three for Texas defensive back. He is favoring that right ankle big time. You see all the tape on that right ankle as well. Over those cleats. Those are cleats I think Lewis Riddick would wear today's day if he was still playing. Those are Kevin Durant throwback fours. Kevin Durant, as you know, played basketball at Texas, and these are custom for the Longhorns only. Let's see if I can give me a pair of those, Cart. <laughs> Maybe just wear them in the booth. Let's lace them up. Hand off and that straight ahead run down to the Texas 40 to set up third and two. 
Kyle Whittingham thought you looked to be in very good shape. He asked you if you were interested in maybe playing a couple of snaps for the Utes. Yeah, and as I told him, I can give you one play. That's it. <laughs> then take me out because I'm probably going to be put in the training room in a hurry. He's got some good looking athletes out here. He doesn't need me at all. They just need to go ahead and convert this third down, see if they can get on the scoreboard. I mean, it's got to be four down territory again with the score the way it is. Nine minutes to go, third quarter. Huntley hands it off, and that run will get the first down. Wasn't totally easy, but Zach Moss gets there. A helmet came flying off for a Longhorns defensive lineman. So Coburn's going to have to come out for at least a play. Yeah, Zach Moss kind of limping back to the huddle. This is the situation here where now they're set up. You see, they're across the 50. They're on about the 36-yard line. This is a nice situation where play action should come into play here. Maybe they can take a shot down the field. Offensive coordinator Andy Ludwig said play action was going to be a big part of this game as far as throwing the football. Here you have a situation where you can take a shot. Huntley, no play action, but he is going to throw the ball. Moss helps pick up the blitz. And now open territory. Huntley goes off that speed, ducks under a hit, and gets eight yards on first down. I think this... This is one of these situations where Tyler Huntley is not really eager to sit back in that pocket anymore and take any hits. And some of these routes are developing down the field where people are coming open, but his eyes are coming down so quick because Joseph Asai and gang have been terrorizing him all night long. But they have, they're going to have some opportunities. It's just going to be key to see whether or not Tyler can capitalize on them. It has to be very frustrating for that guy, Andy Ludwig, who was one-time Utah assistant, coordinator in a lot of big-time programs. This is first year coordinating this Utah offense. He's had a great year. They've had a really good offensive season. They have not scored a point yet tonight, and the game has gone like that a lot. Guess who? Graham Osai was in there. Just about everybody up front for Texas right in on the play. Here you have another one of these short yardage type of situations where the line of scrimmage is just being captured by Texas and they in the movement of Texas the athleticism of Texas in their front seven is giving Utah's offensive line fits. From second and two to third and five. A screen set up, completes the pass, and the stumble forward to get the first down. That was big. Brian Thompson, that's the first time they've gotten the ball in his hands. Yeah, if he doesn't get tripped up there and stumble, he's to the house. This kid has tremendous speed. He could have taken it the distance. That's a good job of Texas limiting what could have been a touchdown. Now we got pushing, shoving, and maybe a flop from Samson to Kua. In college hoops now, that's a penalty. It should be. <laughs> it should be. Flopping's not, that's not my thing, man. We don't need that in the game. Jeffrey McCulloch, who's had a, a kind of a frustrating year, the senior from Houston, good player, but he's been hurt a lot. He was in the middle of that. And they, the officials, they've let him play on the field. They let him play after the play has been over. No penalty flag was thrown. And here you're sitting in their high red zone, first and 10 on the 22 yard line. Now it's time to be efficient. Get the ball to your playmakers. This is Grant Keithy time. This is where they have to get him open and get the ball to him. Keep the emotion. They will give it to him. But an open field tackle is a beauty from Caden Stearns. Caden Stearns has been big all night long. How many times have we seen him make good open field tackles and limit big plays? I mean, that's how you do it as a defensive back. You close the gap quickly. You shoot low, chop his legs out, get him on the ground. I mean, that's textbook defensive back play. Caden Stearns has been having a night. Which anybody can appreciate, but particularly you as a longtime defensive back at the college hey, level, at the NFL level. I know level. how hard that can be. That young man is much better tackling the open field than I ever was. Second and 11, sixth tackle for loss for the Texas defense. Over the top and incomplete. Nakua had just a sliver of room, but the pass was a little too far. Again, nice play design. Nakua number two in that trips formation right there, running what they call the slot fade once again, just trying to fade it towards the boundary. You see him just take off one-on-one, -on -one, pushes off their gate, some separation. But Tyler Huntley's just got to put that ball on him. That's good play design. It's a good call. They're just not able to hit these plays. Third and 11. Once again. 
Brand Keithy has to be the guy. Somehow, some way, well, he's not on the field right now, so they ain't going to get the ball to him. But they have to get somebody singled up one on one, and Tyler's just going to have to complete the pass. Utah needs a positive big time. That one is in there, caught and short. Inside the 15, Damari Simpkins hung on to the football. And Kyle Whittingham, uh, no hesitation, it looks like for me. The field goal kicker is coming out on the field. Jaden Redding, the true freshman. So Utah, they, they have a zero on the scoreboard. They need some points. Yeah, one of the things that you're seeing Texas do, though, they're secondary players. Despite the fact that they're shuttling so many people in and out of there, their best player, Brandon Jones, isn't even playing in this game. They're doing a great job of tackling. From the middle of the field, Jaden Redding has been solid in his freshman year. 32-yard drive. Is up and through. So the shutout is over, but Texas's defense with a big stop there. Utah on the board, two touchdown lead at the Alamo Bowl for the Longhorns. The Valero Alamo Bowl is fueled by Valero and in part by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. The world famous B Tierra in downtown San Antonio. Such a lively downtown, especially this time of year. This city has been packed, jammed the last few days. Fans here for the Alamo Bowl, fans and folks here just to celebrate the holiday season in San Antonio and the Longhorns. The home team officially, it alternates year to year, Big 12 and the Pac-12, but certainly unofficially as well. Lots of Texas fans here tonight inside the Dome. The fair catch means Texas will start at the 25-yard line. This season, for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities. All State will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, All State. Thank you. Sam Ellinger, the junior, who did submit his name to the NFL to get that uh, early entry evaluation. He hasn't officially announced anything, but I think everybody believes he's coming back to Austin for next season. From the shotgun, after Utah gets their first points of this game, with 4.58 to go in the third quarter. Quick hitter, Duvernay, who had the one big play in the first half, gets his second catch of the night. Now there is a penalty flag down. Holding, 13, offense, 10-yard penalty, first down. So that will negate the catch. Now the Longhorns are just a moment ago, we're up 17-0 now, leading 17-3. In the last 15 years, and that goes back a lot longer than Tom Herman, back through all those great Mac Brown years, 88 and 0, when leading by 17 that's at any pretty, point in the game. That's a pretty good record. Yeah, it's pretty good. The odds are in their favor. We'll see if they can hold on tonight. First and 20. Should come and Ellinger steps up and takes off. The official might have sort of got in his way across the 20 out to the 23 yard line. So still short of the original line of scrimmage and second down. And you see what Utah's trying to do as far as them changing up their coverage scheme. That time it looked like they were going to play their traditional man to man coverage. Rotated back to too high. Sam Ellinger said, hey, you can create some room here for me. I'll just use my legs. I'll pick up a couple of extra yards, see if I can get ourselves in some manageable second and third down situations here. Second and 12. Texas content these last few plays to let the clock wind a little bit. Dumps it off short. That's the tight end. Cade Brewer tumbles over after taking a big hit. He's been out a lot this year, back healthy for this bowl game, at least until that hit. Yeah, that one looked like it may have hurt a little bit. You see him getting up limping. But Tom Herman is doing a nice job of keeping Utah off balance with different play design, different personnel groupings. Going three wides, going two wides, going four wides, moving the pocket, traditional drop back, quarterback runs. He's throwing the kitchen sink at Utah and making sure they can't really zone in on his tendencies. 
Bradley and I and that big play Utah defense mostly been kept in check. They could use a big play third and two. That clock continues to wind. Ellinger keeps it. Ellinger nice cut. First down and much more. Trying to use a blocker. Johnson got out there and he's finally shoved out of bounds all the way down to the Utah 36. That's just a great job right there of Sam Ellinger reading that out on the zone read inside. Finding the crease and then just taking off. This is the problem that quarterbacks like him present to defenses again. It gives them an extra man when the quarterback is a legit ball carrier. And you can see it right here. He pulls it from Rashawn Johnson who leads up in the hole as a blocker. And then he's just off to the races one on one in the open field. And that's just a big game. Well, Tom Herman said that Sam was going to play a big part in this game. If you remember as a runner as a designed runner not just as a scrambler but as a designed runner. And he's making good on that promise. Nine rushes 62 yards for the junior quarterback first and ten Longhorns. Duvernay will get the carry and he's going to throw back to his quarterback teammate. Ellinger cuts it middle. Well it was fun to watch. It only got about <laughs> six yards. But it's a bowl game. Uh, Texas will do that kind of thing every once in a while. But it's one of my favorite parts about this time of year. Teams are willing to take some different kinds of chances. And no doubt, look, Tom Herman is using the front and the back of his play calling sheet. If you look at Bradley and I, he gets chopped and knocked to the ground, gets back up off the ground, and then makes a high effort play as far as being able to limit that play. That's the kind of thing that Anaya is known for. That's what Utah is known for. They need some more of these high effort plays to see if they can maybe create some negative plays and keep Texas from putting more points on the board. Second and four. Option pitch. Ingram leaps over the would be tackler. What a play. Ingram gets the first down. Now a hit away from the ball against the quarterback. All kinds of flags thrown. Ellinger hops up, and Utah's losing its cool. Personal foul and necessary roughness. Number 92, the defense. Does have to distance the goal line. Automatic first down. It's unraveling for the Utes right now. Yeah, it is. Look, they have they have Utah on their heels. I mean, Tom Herman is calling all different types of plays that are really putting Utah's defense under duress. And you can see the frustration just starting to mount, and the Texas players are starting to have fun. And you have Ellinger back there just jawing at some of the defensive linemen. I mean, you can see it right here. He takes a low shot right here on the back of your screen. The helmet comes off of the defender. And then kind of gives him a little bit of a cheap shot. And then when Sam says something to him, then you have a little, some kicks exchange, some words exchange. Sam get put, gets pushed to the ground. And Utah right now, they're on their heels. They're in a bad spot in this football game. First and goal, Texas, final minute plus of this third quarter. Ellinger handoff Ingram. This time, you can't jump over the big guy in the middle. Nobody can jump that high. Goes to the outside at second and goal. Now the running back position another spot where te everybody has injuries lots of teams had lots of injuries all year long but Texas was particularly hurt at certain spots the running back room was decimated at times this year for the Longhorns but in this Alamo Bowl showing off some depth of talent some young talent Johnson in now alongside Ellinger. All the way down to one. Johnson takes a handoff. Johnson gets drilled. Flag throw, though. Maybe that's another face mask. Man, that stopped dead. Personal foul. Grasping the face mask. Number 20 of the defense. The penalty will be half the distance of the goal line from the previous spot with an automatic first down. It was going to be third and goal from. Like the 15 or the 13, and now it's first and goal. Another one of those face mask penalties. Yeah, this time on Devin Lloyd, who's made some really good athletic plays here 
And when you get stiff arm like that and you're trying to just reach and grab cloth, grab anything to get a ball carrier on the ground, you got to be careful. You got to keep your hands up off of the face mask and just get the ball carrier on the ground. And as you pointed out earlier, this Utah defense isn't used to being dominated like this and put under duress like this. And they're starting to lose their composure. Ellinger. I don't know if that was by design, but the quarterback made it work. Straight ahead for the Texas touchdown. Another one of these situations here where you see Sam, he's really going to throw a shovel pass. He wants to throw a shovel pass there to Roshan Johnson, but it's covered. It's sniffed out by the Utah defense. So he decides, hey, I'm just going to hit it up inside here, see if I can find a crease and score. And this, again, I can't emphasize enough. Tom Herman said Sam Ellinger was going to play a huge role in this game with his ability to run the football, and he has taken over here in the third quarter. That was really impressive, our Expedia drive recap, because Ellinger made a bunch of things happen with his legs, with his arm. That was the biggest play to kind of set the whole thing up. Yeah, this is a, this is a young man who was excited about playing this game, wanted to just play good for his teammates. There you have Keontae Ingram with the, with the hurdle, and there you have a, a situation where Utah sniffs out the play originally, but Sam just says, hey, I'm going to turn this into backyard football and have some fun, see if I can put six more on the board, and lo and behold, they've blown this game open. It's a good drive for a quarterback when he completes a pass or two, catches a pass, which he did, and runs for the touchdown. Yeah, they're using him in every way possible. They're getting their money's worth out of Sam Ellinger tonight, and Tom Herman, give him credit. For a guy who has changed over his staff, changed both coordinators under a tremendous amount of pressure from this UT fan base that expects them to be in the national conversation every year, he has his team absolutely playing lights out tonight in what is essentially a home game for him. Not quite a home run yet, at least not a walk-off, but yeah, I think they're enjoying themselves. Kickoff deep. Utah has done this all game long just watched it sail into the end zone for another touchback well again New Year's Day tomorrow before the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl two really good games as both start at 1 Eastern on ESPN Minnesota out of the Big Ten against number 12 Auburn that'll be a challenge for the Gophers and Michigan Alabama two of the all-time great programs fascinating game our progressive uh, bowl challenge cup standings so far the SEC with a 4-1 record. Look who's at the bottom, Lewis. The yeah. Big 12 coming into tonight had not won a game. Texas is making their league proud. So on the field for the final play of this quarter. And Tyler Huntley is off and going, and he wanted to send a message there. I'm not sure that was exactly the message he wanted to send to B.J. Foster. But it's a nice game for Utah. Desperation time for the Utes as quarter number three comes to an end. This senior class, which has been so good, so accomplished, has run into a Texas chainsaw tonight here at the Alamo Dome. The Longhorns expanding their lead 24 to three at the end of quarter number three on New Year's Eve night. Well, one thing about this game, if you thought it's over, Texas very good offensively in the fourth quarter all season long, but no team gave up more fourth quarter points in the country, which is hard to believe than the Texas Longhorns. So they have the big lead, but on the first play of scrimmage in the fourth quarter, a nice gain on the ground from Zach Moss and the Utah offense now into Texas territory. But we've seen stranger things happen in this uh, Alamo Bowl. Utah's got to go quickly, and they do. They hand it off to their tight end. That's that jet sweep, and look at the speed of Keithy, the Texas kid, inside the 20. We have not seen that all game long. Going with up-tempo was something that Utah did at the end of the first half, and it yielded them some good yardage, and they need to do that now, one, out of necessity because they're behind, but two, it just seems to get Texas on their heels and not be able to play with the same kind of aggression. I would expect them to operate this way for the rest of this game. So they did substitute to the officials. I think Utah wanted to go fast, but they have to give Texas a chance to do the same. They do. Huntley under center. 
play fake. Looking for Keithy, instead dumps it off to the other tight end who's upended down to the five. That's Fotheringham, the sophomore from Southern California. First minute of this fourth quarter, and Utah playing with some pep as they try to get their first touchdown of this Alamo Bowl. Yeah, it's important here that they punch this in. It's important that they are sound with their play calls, sound with their assignments, and that they decide to throw the football. Tyler Huntley has to be accurate with the football. They have had people open. He just hasn't hit them. No field goal kicking, I don't think, for Utah from here on out. Second and one. Huntley dances around. He gets drilled and taken down. What a game for Osai. And what else is there to say about Joseph Osai tonight? He has been everywhere. He has been an absolute monster. The secondary players have tackled well. Osai has been used all over the football field. You see him beating people one on one. Tyler Huntley is going to have nightmares of him tonight when he lays his head down to go to sleep. Because Joseph Asai has taken over this football game for the University of Texas defense. Best player on the field, I think. Without a doubt. It's easy. 46 has been everywhere. Huntley dumps it short incomplete. It just was nothing happening on that play for Utah. Now, I mean, again, I don't think a field goal does the Utes any good. So even though they got pushed back and it's fourth and six, they have to go for it. Yeah, they got to come up with something here, number one, that negates the pressure that Texas has been putting on them. So Tyler Huntley has time to read it out. And then they have to win down the field, and Tyler has to put it on them when they throw this football. Because all three of those things have not been happening on a consistent basis. Protect the passer. The passer has to be accurate, and they have to catch it and come up with it. Huntley steps up. Huntley now going to take off. Huntley dives and didn't get there. Great effort, but he did not get the first down. Now a penalty flag behind the play. Somebody's helmet got ripped off. I'm not sure that was part of the actual penalty. Now, it could be, though, that if you continue playing without a helmet. Personal foul, number 99 of the defense. His helmet came off, and he continued to participate in the play. This is a penalty that will be half the distance to the goal line with an automatic first down. Wow. Maybe a game saver for Utah because they just gave the ball up on downs. That's the rule. If you keep playing once your helmet comes off, it's a penalty against you. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's one of these situations where his helmet gets ripped off by the offensive lineman from Utah and then he gets penalized because his instincts take over and he wants to chase the football. I understand they're trying to protect the player and they want him to just shut it down so he does not suffer any kind of head injury. But what a weird rule as far as I mean you're asking a guy to go totally against what his instincts tell him to do. I hate that rule but I do understand. Yeah. So first and goal maybe the Longhorns can come up with an inspired stop. Maybe Utah just give the ball to number two. They do. Moss gets driven backwards. I, I don't even need to say his name. The guy who has led the way on so many of these plays. Now he had some help on that play, but number 46 in the backfield again. They can't block him. But the short yardage situations continue to haunt the Utah offense and offensive coordinator Andy Ludwig. They struggled with it in the Pac-12 championship. They're start struggling with it tonight. With the size that they have, they should be able to run power and get this ball into the end zone. You would expect play action to be something that they utilize down there at this point. Second and goal. How many chances will Utah get in this part of the field? Over the top, it is caught. Touchdown. Nice throw. Big time throw. Simpkins with the catch. The senior playing his final game. His high school teammate delivered the ball perfectly. That's a beautiful over the outside shoulder away from the defensive back, Anthony Cook. But that's really, when you look at it, that's Tyler Huntley's best throw of this game. He's had some one on one situations that he's missed early on. He didn't miss that one, and Damari Simpkins does a good job. Is there any question, Lewis, about the little bobble in the hand of Simpkins? He got the foot down clearly. The ball did move a little bit after that. At least as of now, they're not stopping it. They, they, 
right. They are looking at the play, but they're lining up for the extra point. If I were Utah, I would just snap this ball and kick it. They do. The touchdown's going to stand. It is up and good. Uh, it might be worth another look. Yeah, no question. No question. I'll defer to you on this. Let's take a look. Ooh. That and ball's moving a little bit. A little, a little bit. Not called. Utah gets its first touchdown. The Valero Alamo Bowl is fueled by Valero. And in part by Visit San Antonio. Plan your trip at visitsanantonio.com. New Year's Eve night here in San Antonio, Texas, in the heart of Big 12 country. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. A must have if you're a Texas basketball fan, exclusive home to more than 40 Big 12 games. Texas, Oklahoma State on the 15th of January. Texas TCU both exclusively on ESPN Plus. Sign up at ESPN Plus.com. Longhorns basketball off to a good start this year. The football team trying to end its year here at the Alamo Dome. And the Valero Alamo Bowl in uh, emphatic fashion. That one will be fair caught around the goal line by the Longhorns. Sam Ellinger has got the heart of a lion. Watching him come off between series, he absolutely emcees the tank every single time. And after an incredible sophomore year, the expectations for him were huge. Well, statistically, he delivered this season, and he is tonight. Rushed for a touchdown in 10 of the last 12 games, and he's been the main rushing threat for the Texas Longhorns against a Utah defense coming in number one in the nation against the rush. Well, Sam, who had that great Sugar Bowl last year, upset win for Texas in New Orleans against Georgia, which was supposed to be the springboard into this season. That's part of the reason why expectations were so high for Texas. Sam echoed our friend uh, Joe Tessitore, sort of famously declared, Texas is back. How about Johnson breaking tackles? Roshan Johnson outside the 40. I personally, this is no knock on anybody, I'm not going to be using that B word with the Longhorns tonight, but this could be a nice springboard into 2020. Yeah, it absolutely should be. And they're doing a good job from a schematic standpoint, from a strategy standpoint, of saying we're not going to run inside against your big man. We're going to continue to run zone read on the outside, make your ends have to think a little bit, and then get out on the perimeter and just run. This is a great job of play calling by Tom Herman. You have to give him his credit. Yep. And he's calling all the plays. He will not be next year. Mike Yersich hired from Ohio State, and part of the draw to get him to Austin is he is going to be the play caller. Johnson powers forward for a gain of two and a half yards or so. And Tom Herman has talked a lot in the lead up to this bowl game about how he does not, he loves calling plays as a coordinator, as the head coach. He doesn't want to do it. He's done it primarily these last two years. He thinks he'll be a better head coach if he doesn't have to have both responsibilities. Yeah, you know that, you know, depending upon what your discipline is, whether it's defense or offense, I mean, your first love is actually calling plays. And when you're a head coach, obviously everybody wants to be a head coach, but he's pretty good at calling plays, as you can see here tonight. Second and seven near midfield. Ellinger over the top. Johnson out there. Duvernay rather. What a catch. Devin Duvernay. Beautiful hands and a perfect pass. Well, that, the deep slot fade. It's something you see on Sundays in the NFL over and over and over again. And here, he's just going to streak down the field. And this again, this is a guy who runs 10-2-7 in the 100 meters. Now, that's pretty good coverage on Nephi Sewell's part. But I'll tell you what. Devin Duvernay is as good as it gets. I mean, this is a guy who has tremendous concentration. Here we go again. Ellinger with that design quarterback run. Now, that time he took a pretty big hit. He got five yards on first down. I guess that's the downside. You got a mobile quarterback. It's such an extra weapon. So hard on defenses, but he can take some hits. Yeah, look, they're up in the tank tonight, though. Yeah, why not? Johnson straight ahead. Carrying defenders. How physical has Texas been so far in this Alamo yeah, Bowl? Just think about this. Roshan Johnson is an ex-quarterback. Just started playing running back this year. One of the best teammates, Tom Herman said, that he's ever had as far as a guy in his program. Totally unselfish, willing to do whatever it takes to help the team win. 
First and goal. Ellinger design run with a block. Touchdown. Now penalty flag on the ground. That might be coming back. Holding 52 offense. Tiger a penalty. First down. And it will. Sam Cosby, who's a talented left tackle, who's played a heck of a game, that time gets penalized. Yeah, Sam Cosby, the left tackle out here on the perimeter. You see him, he's just trying to secure the edge. And they get him there for the holding right there on Devin Lloyd. But I'll tell you this again, Rashawn Johnson, you want to talk about unselfish? That time he's the lead blocker for Sam Ellinger. This young freshman is just an absolute stud. Tom Herman has some young guys in the fold here that this team should be a whole lot better in 2020 if they can stay healthy. And they're putting on a show here tonight. So for the moment, he comes to the sideline, and Keontae Ingram is back in. It's goal to goal, but now from the 15th, first and goal, Texas. Ellinger over the top. That one is a one-handed attempt incomplete, trying to hit Johnson. Josh Nurse, he's not been perfect tonight, but I think number 14 has played pretty well. Yeah, that's a good matchup. Josh Nurse is a big, long, tall corner at 6'3", and you see him going up against Colin Johnson. That's just length against length. That's Those are big boys right there. Those are high risers going up against one another, and that's what cornerbacks are paid to do. And Josh Nurse is going to be one of those guys who's going to be fun to watch and see how he develops here down the road when he moves on to the next level. And he was a guy, wide receiver in junior college, wasn't being used a lot on the offensive side of the ball, so Utah flipped him to defensive back. He's still very inexperienced, but he can play. Second to goal, pressure comes. Ellinger takes a hit over the top. Duvernay jumps up, and he caught it! Touchdown! I think we may get him for a little bit of a push-off here. He did push off the field separation, but what a stunt. This time, instead of running the running the fade, they run a little corner route from the slot. Devin Duvernay's putting on a show here late in this football game. Let's see who the penalty's against. Number 28 it's on the, the defense. defense. The penalty's declined. The result that of the play. That one either way. Touchdown. <laughs> hey, you like scoring, you're going to get scoring here. This is a great job. Just look at him jab inside and then just run the seven. You see him push off there at the break point. Oh, they're just battling down the field. You know, they get they get the defensive back, Javelin Gidry there from trying to pull on on Devin Juvenet there at the catch point. What a great battle. What a great game this has become as far as the performance Texas is putting on offensively. Right, Duvernay was relatively quiet. The nation's leading receiver coming in in the first half. He's having a big second half. Yeah, nice job creating separation and then just fighting for that 50-50 ball like he's a 6'5 guy and he's only 5'11". I think tumultuous would be a good way to describe 2019 for the Longhorns. They won that Sugar Bowl. So impressive. That was a big reason why they were number 10 in the preseason poll. The showdown with LSU in Austin. It was a great game. Texas played really well. We didn't even know how good LSU was at that point. They lost that game. They played Oklahoma tough again. Lost that one. Did not play Baylor as well. The season started to kind of peter out toward the end. At the end of the regular season, defensive coordinator fired. Offensive coordinator reassigned. Demoted. All that leading into this you thought maybe this program would just be in chaos and yet in this Alamo Bowl on New Year's Eve night in San Antonio Tom Herman's team has perhaps played their best all-around game of the season yeah and Tom Herman may be coaching his best all-around game of the season because he knew exactly where he thought that he had the advantage particularly on offense as far as his perimeter players and his quarterback and he is playing to those strengths he's not trying to do something his team can he's utilizing his strengths Look at what he's put, 31 points up on the board. So next year, well, it's never easy at Texas, but how about the game at LSU? They get Oklahoma, as always, at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. The road games in conference play, you would figure maybe are a little more favorable, but at Kansas State, not going to be easy. Go to Lubbock. That game in Baton Rouge on the 12th could be uh, a season statement for the Longhorns in 2020, where after another great bowl performance, that expectation level is going to be ratcheted yeah. up again, assuming they finish this one off. I think this time they won't talk so much about it. They're just going to want to try and do it on the football field. That would be a good idea, yeah. I think. Zach Moss had nowhere to feed me sign out there. You know they're feeling it right now. These kids are playing to the crowd. This is a senior, Malcolm Roach, who right now playing his last football game here at UT. Great performance. Utah's got to go fast with eight and a half to go. Huntley. 
in the pocket, throws that one low, incomplete. So Texas returns the home and home with LSU next year in Baton Rouge. Later in the decade, so we flip the page to a new year and a new decade. Home and homes are already scheduled for Texas with Alabama, Michigan, Ohio State, and Georgia. Well, they're playing the big boys. That's what you expect <laughs> when you. That's expect what you should expect when you play in Texas. And they have a lot of young players that are getting some valuable, valuable experience this year out of necessity because of the injuries. Tom Herman should have a pretty good team coming back next year, and it's all going to start with that guy on your screen, number 11, Sam Ellinger. Third and ten, Huntley on the run. He has been all game. Throws short, incomplete. It's fourth down. Yeah, minus a few throws, Tyler Huntley has not felt comfortable all night, Dave. You could just see from the very get-go, Texas threw a multitude of blitzes at him, a bunch of different looks, and his eyes have been coming down more and more, wondering where are these burnt orange jerseys coming from. I mean, nobody wants to punt down 21 with 8:21 to go in the game, but I, I mean, what are you going to do if you're Kyle Whittingham? A second straight game that's going to be hard to explain for Utah's players, for their coaches, for their fans. And it's too bad in a way because one of their all time great seasons is ending with a big thud. Line drive punt. Jamison who had one spectacular return already. You see the speed. This guy can move back to midfield. The special teams has been good for the Longhorns tonight. And I'm guessing that they may not take their foot off the gas pedal even with the big lead here in San Antonio, a town that loves the Longhorns. That trophy in sight for Texas here on New Year's Eve night. They can prepare for a month on what we do, but they cannot prepare for who I know we are. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. So you be who we are. Uh, Dabo gets to play the underdog card one more time. Yeah, he does. <laughs> they haven't lost in years. He loves doing that, doesn't he? Trevor He's Lawrence one of the, has never lost a game. Got one of the best teams in the country and still claiming they don't get any respect. Uh, All-time great run for this Clemson program. Handoff on first down. Texas not going to let up. Ingram breaking tackles down the sideline. There he goes. Touchdown. What a tremendous run by Deontay Ingram. What a great job. You had everything that you want to see in a running back on display in that run. Vision, feet, the stiff arm, awareness to not go out of bounds, tremendous balance, protecting the football. You see the football high and tight in his arm. Breakaway speed. Boy, Texas is just pouring it on right now offensively. My goodness. The Longhorn fans here in the Alamo Dome, I mean, they're celebrating, they're happy. They also might be turning to one another going, where was this team? Yeah. This was a team that needed a last-minute field goal at home to beat Kansas. And they are pounding one of the best in the country in Utah here tonight, Keontae Ingram. As Lewis said, what else do you want to see from a running back? First play of the drive to the end zone, Longhorns. We're all salivating, just like Bevo, getting ready for the national championship game presented by AT&T Monday, January 13th, 8 Eastern on ESPN, streaming live. We got mega cast. We got a heavyweight battle, offense, defense, LSU, Clemson. Gosh, can the Tigers be really the first team? I guess Auburn sort of did it. Can anybody slow down this LSU offense? That's a great question. You better put pressure on that quarterback. You better have some man-to-man -man coverage, guys, because these wide receivers will absolutely rip you. They, as they've shown, they've done it to everybody. Clemson will be up to the challenge. I think that'll be a great, great football game that'll be tightly contested down to the last possession. All right, you got two weeks left, but nobody watched the two semifinal games yeah. more closely than you did. You yeah. watched them very, very closely. I think what you saw in these games is, look, LSU's on a whole different level. Is LSU, Ohio State, and Clemson, those three teams, I think, on any given day could beat each other. Oklahoma, they never had a shot. They don't have the personnel to match up with those guys. Those three teams are, on a, are in the class by, by themselves. Uh, Utah just getting trucked here. Uh, the 
Utes. Uh, I, I feel bad for these seniors, for Zach Moss, for Tyler Huntley, for Damari Simpkins, for Bradley and I, for all of them. I mean, they have been so good. 36 wins for this class, ranked in the top 25. And even that, those numbers sort of undersell things, what this group has accomplished in Salt Lake City. But one win away from a playoff berth, they were going if they beat Oregon in the Pac-12 championship game. They got their doors blown off in that one. And insult to injury here in the Alamo Bowl. And the ball off. Vickers going backwards. But we don't even have to say who that is, do we? Just say it's number 46. Who's Joseph aside tonight has just been otherworldly. Before that tackle right there, he had eight tackles, three sacks, five tackles for a loss. Now you just rack up another TFL. This young man's been all over the place. What a tremendous. That's how the pads are supposed to sound. It's football, folks, and that is, that's good old-fashioned football right there. That's the way they expect people to play defense in Austin. Yeah, I remember a Tom Herman game at Houston where Ed Oliver was all over the field and just single-handedly dominated everybody on the other side of the ball. In fact, it was against Lamar Full Jackson start. and Louisville. 71 offense, five yard penalty. I don't Third remember down. a lot of other games where one defense, everybody on Texas has played well. Yeah. But Joseph Osai tonight has dominated at a different level. What a spectacular game for him. Yeah, for the second game in a row, Utah has lost the hitting battle. Yeah. And that's just what you, if, even if they were to lose this football game, you didn't think that they would lose it in this manner because they were getting out physical on the football field. And Texas has brought the fight right to them right from the get go. And it's been led by number 46, Joseph Passat. Third and 22. Huntley, nowhere to go. Going down again. Malcolm Roach, the senior, playing his final game with the Longhorns. And what a great player he's been. He'll get credit for the sack. This young secondary, all the injuries that they've had, they've done a tremendous job of not having too many communication errors, tackling very well in the back end, and the front guys have just been on a tear. They've been chasing the quarterback all over the place. And I'll tell you this, when they've hit Tyler Huntley tonight, they have made it count. In a fair way, nothing dirty. They have just played a good old-fashioned tough football game. And they've earned what looks like is going to be a big win for them to close out 2019. One of the captains. 13 tackles for loss, five sacks for Texas. Fair catch, very short punt, does take a favorable Utah bounce on the turf, so that could have been a whole lot worse. Down to the 33 yard line. Well, Joseph Osai, how good has he been tonight? He's just been everywhere. You see him here rushing the pass over the quick inside move, and again, putting a big hit on Tyler Huntley. They're just lowering the boom in the run game, playing smart as far as being a force player, just never giving up as far as his pass rush is concerned. And what you see, his athleticism is out of control he's a guy who's got great height great power great speed great change of direction and you just see the stat line right there nine tackles three sacks six tackles for a loss that's about as good as it gets as far as player of the game is concerned i mean look at those numbers that is why he is our capital one player of the game texas offense back on the field and a short gain on the first down run as I mentioned earlier, Joseph Asai came to America at a 10-year-old boy from Nigeria. Didn't like football, but in seventh grade, once he got pads, he fell in love with the game. He started as a wide receiver, but when they switched him to defense, it was all football 24-7. And he told me once he started hitting guys, he just wanted to keep on hitting. And tonight, he's dominant. Lewis, on the field. When you look at Joseph Asai, athletically, he just looks different. He's long, he's lean. This guy just has such a tremendous future. And he's young and has a whole lot more upside. This is almost like a basketball thing. Look what Tom Herman's doing. He's letting his seniors who are playing their final game in the middle of a drive come off the field and get a big ovation from the Texas fans, including Zach Shackelford, Colin Johnson, who came back healthy and played a heck of an Alamo Bowl. And I think now Texas has called a timeout to let that happen. Devin Duvernay, what a senior year he had, my goodness. That was a classy move by Tom Herman. Uh, that, that doesn't happen too often in football. That's the sort of, sort of thing you see a, a coach 
on the hardwood call a timeout and let his uh, crowd cheer a group of seniors. I mean, this is the final group. Now, those guys, some of those did not play for Charlie Strong, but this is really the last group of Texas players who bridged the two coaching regimes. Sure. And I think they d it's been an up and down career for all those guys. They deserve some credit. No doubt. And look, Tom Herman understands how big this moment is, especially in front of this big UT crowd here in, in San Antonio. And they have just played lights out. They've played above and beyond, I believe, what anybody expected they would be able to play against a Utah team that had a lot to prove. But they have just taken it to them. This is almost like a repeat for Utah of the Pac-12 championship, almost a carbon copy. Just haven't been able to get anything going on offense, have been out physical, and then their defense has just been taken to the woodshed by this Texas offense in a way I just didn't expect to see. Daniel Young is now in at tailback. Casey Thompson in at quarterback for Texas. 38 to 10 here, under four minutes to go. The rush defense, which got gashed by Oregon, even with that, was still the best in FBS. Another 222 yards tonight for Texas on the ground. Amazing. Well, by the way, you can tune in on the ESPN app for our post-game trophy ceremony presented by Capital One. Immediately following the game, we'll have Clark down on the field. I'm sure with Coach Herman, with a bunch of his players, the ceremony on the stage, the most outstanding player award will be handed out. We gave it to Osai. I mean, Ellinger would be a. Uh, yeah, I think he the... might get it, but I'll tell you what, there's a bunch of guys out here who have played good tonight. Look, Devin Duvernay, why couldn't you say he couldn't get it? He really blew up in this second half. An all around dominant performance on New Year's Eve night in San Antonio for the Longhorns. Final three minutes. And just okay to hand the ball off. Young got body slammed at the end of that play. So hopefully everybody can uh, stay under control for these final couple minutes. By the way, coming up next on Sports Center, JJ Watt. He's coming back for that playoff game. You'll be in Houston for Bills, Texans. Oh yeah, Doncic and uh, Trey Young. Who's had a better career through 100 games? I could answer that one. Nobody asked me, but I could. Rose Bowl, Wisconsin, Oregon. That's tomorrow afternoon. I think the greatest scene in all of sports, New Year's Day from Pasadena. You got the Sugar Bowl from New Orleans tomorrow night. Interesting game, Georgia and Baylor. More on the line for Georgia maybe than you would think because of the way last year's Sugar Bowl went. If it goes similarly, Georgia fans are not going to be happy. Thompson on the move gets a Texas first down. Yeah, I think Kirby Smart right now, he has some great players down there, and he's been just really just racking up the three, four, five star players down there with his recruiting classes. They're going to expect some better results. They're going to expect them to win a national championship here soon. But that's why you take those kind of jobs. That's why you go to that kind of school. That's why you want to coach at that kind of school. And Kirby is a fantastic coach. And he is in a league that has some absolute heavyweights down there in the SEC, as we all know. Out of bounds, under two minutes, the clock stops. So 1.55 to go. First and 10 for Thompson and the Longhorns, putting the finishing touches on their best game of the year, which is what we said at the end of last year when they beat up on Georgia. It is the read in here going, how does this happen two games in a row? He's going to have to go back to the drawing board this offseason to make sure this doesn't happen again. Four receivers for Texas. And they are going to let Thompson, the young quarterback, throw the ball. Well, they were, but he goes down quickly. But now it'll be third and long. One more play, at least, to run in this one. Barring something unforeseen, Casey Thompson's going to have to wait at least one more year for his turn. <laughs> Tom Herman. That's got to feel good. You see Joseph Asai standing over there just kind of shadowing him, <laughs> talking in his ear. I think he's trying to distract him. I think there may be some Gatorade somewhere sneaking up behind him. Yep. All right, getting it ready. That's good teamwork over there, fellas. Final play, Thompson will just has to do. The final seconds will wind down. They get 
What a performance from the long I appreciate it, Dave. This has been a treat this year. What a great way to end it here on New Year's Eve with a nice football game like this. For Paul Carcaterra, Lewis Riddick, Scott Matthews, Anthony DeMarco, and our great crew, Dave Fleming, saying so long. 38-10, the final score coming up next on ESPN. We take you to Sports Center.